all of a sudden it had an immediate audience that could target it. It had a, it, you knew when to promote it, you knew what to write the homepage. It had a reason to actually exist. Um, and other examples of like, of like actual specific community online could be, it could be anything, it could be people that like skateboarding, people like snowboarding, or people like building robots out of these Arduino pieces. Which sounds weird, but it's actually a big online community. Just try not to be too general. Don't, don't, for your first thing at least, don't try and go out and just target bloggers because it's too broad. Um, the other thing that's really important to mention is that that community that you're trying to target can be completely different from your desired customers. And you can see that really clearly with OKP. So that blog post that I was talking about before, it was really well written, but it, was, it had a bit of a blokey overtone to it. And, and it, it really geeky, really, really geeky. It's brilliant. But if you look at their homepage, you can immediately see who their target customer is. It's, it's right there in the default options. It's single, straight, women. So the people that you target to get links from don't have to be the same as your customers. And this, this part is going to sound really, really obvious, but if you're trying to, to pitch the news, if, you, if your aim is to get links from The Guardian, people like that, um, they just want a story. So think of the headline. Think of the headline first and then work backwards. Um, going back to that OKCupid post, there, there's a whole load of stuff in that post. And that bit about I've been using having more sex, that was just a bit of an, oh, by the way, I've been using having sex to this data. But of course, that's the, that's the headline, isn't it? That's amazing. How can you not write about that post? And so when you look at the news coverage they had, they've got Gorka, I've been using having sex, The Register, CNET, Gizmodo, Mashable, Pet Crunch, Fast Company, The Independent, so it's going to look at ABC News, CNN Money, they're all talking about I've been using having sex. And that was a really small part of that post. But the interesting thing was that, right, it's that headline. We saw it again recently with the, um, that fake study that went out. It was a complete hoax, so and I don't recommend hoaxes. I genuinely don't. But there was that study that went out that said that Internet Explorer users had a below average IQ. And it was believable, right? But, <laughs> but how can you not write that story? So if you're trying to pitch the news, focus on the headline. Um, so in terms of building apps and things like that, the longer, and this sounds obvious as well, but it's true, the longer it takes to build it, the lower the ROI is going to be, the more links it needs to get, really, for it to justify its own existence. So um, the way I do that is to, to try and speed up dev time by using a framework. So I'll use Ruby on Rails, which I'm building something, rather than hand coding things in PHP, which is quite easy. Um, you can also use things like Django for Python. Um, there's a whole load of PHP frameworks. But use a PHP framework, well, use a framework, not PHP, um, and just kind of speed up dev time. For me as well, this is what I do, just for the prototype, right? just for the initial beta version of something, um, I will use a, a default admin theme from Team Forest rather than designing them myself. Partly because I'm really, really bad at design, but also partly because it's faster. So this is something I got from Ground Control, it's just a finance managing app thing. Um, but I was able to do it really, really quickly. It's one of the fastest apps that I've built, simply because I used Ruby on Rails, and I used a $10 theme from Team Forest. That's just for the prototype, right? If it's successful, I might, have, you know, get a designer in and, and you know, actually make it a, a better customized version, but just to make it quick, um, that's what we use for the prototype. But then here's the thing as well, launch the prototype, because not everything that you produce is going to be successful. You might have a really, like what you think is a really, really good idea, but until you launch it, you don't know if other people think that too. And this is something that I got from how long would it take you to make a million dollars at .com. I thought it was a really good idea when I built it. The idea was quite simple, you put in how much you earn, how much you spend, how much you save, and it, and it depressingly tells you how long it's going to be until you're a millionaire. <laughs> the saddest thing I've ever built. Um, I don't recommend reading it. But it, when I launched it, it sunk. The idea was rubbish. But I didn't know that until I, until I launched it. Um, so if you can launch something, you get something out quickly, you can fail faster. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry, it, it's okay. Like sometimes, sometimes things work. But that only took about half an hour, and I could have easily spent a week um, in doing that. But the thing is, even when even when something does fail by, by, by what you're hoping it to do, you can still get some links out of it. So if you're building an app, you can still submit things like Killer Startups and Startup Living the Museum of, of Modern Meters and a whole load of places like this. And, um, and you can get links out of it that way, but also you can get feedback as to where you went wrong, what, what they'd like to see included. And similarly, if you've made an infographic and it's not got the coverage that you wanted, you can, um, there's a whole lot of infographic showcases out there that you can, you can add it to. But then building it is hard.
half the battle. The other half is 